Hey everybody, how's it going? So I thought we'd do a, a quick little review and setup of the SelfCAD slicer. Uh, it's web-based from SelfCAD. Um, and it's, so I, you know, I've been playing with it for a little while and I thought we'd jump in here and, and see if there's interest in, in anyone wanting to try it, try it out and use it. And so I can walk you through the, the steps to set up your machine and, and get something imported. Uh, you roll over to selfcad.com and you set up a free account. Uh, and it's free to use. Um, which I think is great. I think anyone spending some time on um, you know, spending development cycles to give us some design and slicing tools for, for free is is fantastic and you know only makes the 3D printing space that much cooler to be in uh, when you have some some good functional tools uh, to to work around with. So here we go. I'm gonna I'm gonna play with this little bolosaur um, just because it's here and. Um, if you you can design your own stuff, and I'm really not going to go through any of the design aspects in this video, but you can that's you know completely do your own design. Um, it even has sculpting features. But uh, I'm going to bring in an existing STL. So to do that, you go up here to File and Import, and then you um, select your uh, select which which STL or uh, you want to bring in, and it'll pop it right there on the build plate. Uh, it sometimes it comes in a little funky, and uh, if it's if it's rotated the wrong way, you just make sure you're selected here by this checkbox or by selecting it directly. You can hit the rotate, and then move things around either with the arrows or over here on the, the left navigation. Um, you can move it, you can scale it, all that good stuff. Um, and so since we are actually good to go at this point, I'm just going to roll roll over to the three print space. So when you click that, um, it opens a new tab. It uh, brings in your build plate and then imports your object uh, from your design space over. And if you've never used this before and you need to set up your machine, um, so first things first is pick your nozzle. Uh, defaults, I think, to a 0.4. I use a 0.6. Uh, and then you need to select your machine. So you pick the machine picture there, and it has a, a big list of machines that you can pick from. Uh, I was surprised at how many it had in here. So I think that's <clears throat> that's a testament to how much work they put into this and find the profiles. Now, if for some reason your printer's not there, you can open uh, open the profile editor and make your own. So um, once that's all done, you come back. Your machine should be selected here. Um, and you can then start setting up your slices. So the stuff across the top is really more like easy mode, right? So you have your quality setting. Uh, you have an infill sort of a couple of... Um, you know, quick and easy defaults, uh, default values to put in there, whether or not you want support, and then your material type. Um, we're going to dive right into the settings portion right here. And when you dive into settings, you've got quality, material, support, adhesion, all that stuff across the top. And then, you know, coming down, layer height, shell, all that good stuff. So we'll just do some of the quick and dirties to layer heights, right? Point 0.2, uh, normal layer height, initial layer height, point 0.2, line width. Is a 0.6 to match your nozzle. Um, hit the character hide uh, from a shell perspective. Uh, instead of it asking you how many walls you want to print, like an idea maker does, this one wants a you know a dimension. So um, 1.8 millimeters that gives me three walls. Now, if you tick down here, some of these sections have advanced settings that you can tweak, and so you can look at like a outer wall wipe distance. Um, this is almost, it's not quite coasting, but right, it does that extra, that extra little wipe with the Z seam to help hide things up. What you want your top skin layers, how many top skin layers do you have, do you want your uh, top and bottom line patterns, things like that. Optimizing wall printing. So it's got a good amount of um, advanced features in here. Um, Z seam alignment, so I like that it has this. Um, you can specify a location or if it's on a corner, so I'm going to put it at, you know, middle of my X in the back of my Y. So I'm going to have it rolling sort of right up his backside here. I'm going to hide the Z seam back here. You can you can specify a coordinate. Um, if it's got sharp corners, you can try and hide the seam on a corner. Um, I'm sorry, this is to, to hide the seam, expose the seam, or, um, uh, or hide or expose the seam. So I'm not super sure what that means. So if you hover over that and read that, it'll tell you. Um, if you do the Z seam relative, it either means you're doing it relative to the build plate or relative to the model. Um, so I believe unchecked, you're relative to the build plate. If you're checked, you're relative to the model. Um, it has ironing features, which is kind of nice if you're doing flat stuff. And then uh, 
we roll down here to infill. Um, so again, this one, this particular model doesn't require any infill, so I'm not going to play with it. But um, you do have some advanced settings for your infill. Um, and then you've got your speed settings down here. So, you know, pretty much brought this in at like 60 millimeters a second normal. I'm going to still let it do its sort of default speeds and see how it comes out. Uh, the only thing I did not really tweak here was, was up my travel speed and I just maxed it out because, you know, why not travel as fast as possible to reduce the print time and it's going to be limited by the machine's firmware anyway. So, and then there are some additional advanced settings down here. Um, so if you need to slow down or speed things up, um, with your initial layer starts or skirts or brims, um, number of flow layers, all that good stuff. Print Excel. Oh, so it does have some acceleration settings too. So it's got, it's kind of nice. It's, uh, there are some, some extra advanced features in here. Interesting. Um, and then travel. Um, so do you, you know, how do you want to comb? So, um, if you're, if you're coming from idea maker, we don't really have this, this, uh, this terminology for combing, but it's how do you want the head to move? And so if you don't want to, um, combing mode will basically say, you know, where do you want to keep the print head while it's traveling? If you want to keep it within the print, if you want to make sure it stays outside the print when it's traveling or just stay, stay inside the print, but not in the top and bottom layers, like in the skins. Um, so those are kind of fun to play with. Um, and then you have the extra layer starts and stops here. So I'm not sure why the, um, why the redundancy between this and the, the Z scene. Um, so I've just matched up the settings here just to make sure that that thing's hidden. And then you get down here to cooling and it's really, uh, it's kind of basic, right? Fan speed. There are some advanced settings here on cooling and uh, things like that, but I'm just going to leave it at defaults. And so if we roll all the way back up here to the top and go to material, I'm going to print this at 200. You'll play 50. Advanced settings here. It lets you tweak and tune some of the, the initial and final printing temps, cooldowns, um, flow rates are here. So if you need to tweak your flow rates at all, um, your initial flow rate. So if you want to give it some little extra to make sure that you know you're getting a good squeeze on the on the build plate, great. I've gone ahead and uh, torqued this up to like 102 versus 100 percent. Um, and then whether or not you want to enable retractions. Um, I believe the Z hop Z hop, I think is back over here on, uh, was back on travel and I had the Z hop turned off on this one. Um, no supports here, but it's got decent support, um, settings to play with. So, um, and I think for the most part, they're pretty self-explanatory again, since I'm not doing any supports on this one, uh, I'm going to leave it, leave it alone. But, um, I do like that it has some, some good settings here. Uh, build plate adhesion, so none, skirt, brim, wrapped, and then some extra settings here as far as like line counts and things like that. So that's always nice to see. Mesh fixes, that's all here as well. So if you're bringing in an STL file like I did and it's got some issues or some tiny holes or something that it just can't handle, you can you can remove them, you can play with them. Now, and if you're designing in their workspace, then even better, right? Then you have more more finite control over those small features based on what you're printing. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and slice this now. And we'll see how things turn out. Um, for a web-based slicer, the performance is actually pretty good. Um, since it's, you know, it's not, you know, other than other than the view in your browser, it's not really using your machine hardware to do anything. It's using it's using the almighty cloud to do it. Uh, the interface is pretty smooth. So as you click and drag down here, you can check your layers, and it's got a nice smooth interface. It's not jerky. Um, you can come all the way down here. Um, you can gray out completed layers, so it's only showing you your your active layer. You can show your travel moves, and again, this is pretty much just almost like running a base, but there's a couple of spots where it's not. Um, and it gives you a filament usage, which is kind of nice. Um, so I can see right there, there is an island. Oh no, it's not an island. It's connected. Never mind. We're good to go. And there's a little little thingy right there. But anyway, it's inside. I'm going to ignore it. I'm not going to worry about it too much. I really don't think it's going to fail. Um, so, yeah. So there we go. So then from here, uh, if you are pleased with your results, you can save your G code using this button. It'll bring it into your downloads folder. Uh, and then you can get it out to your printer and give it a shot. So I've got this running on the printer now. And uh, we'll see how it comes out. 
Okay, so we're finished with the print. It is off the printer. This is from the, the self-cad uh, slice that we just did. Uh, overall, pretty good. Um, I do see, um, you know, again, so, you know, with it just kind of being like my first go with this slicer, uh, I'd say it's it's uh, it's not bad. It's it's pretty good. Um, there are some there are a couple small issues with, and I think this is probably more related to me sort of tuning and tweaking that profile a little bit to get it uh, dialed in. I think overall it it printed pretty well. It handled overhangs pretty good, which is more probably a testament to um, you know the printer uh, more than the slice. I think this was probably running a little bit too fast for my printer. Um, you know, generally in that 60, 70 millimeters per second, things get a little loosey goosey. I tend to print more like in the 60, 50 time, uh, you know, frame rate, but uh, or or speeds. But um, but look, overall, I think it's a it's a good it's a good first attempt. It looks like it got the Z seam for the most part running up the back here. I do see a couple of bulges um, and some over extrusion. This could be related to that flow rate that I. Uh, snuck it up there to like 102 percent um and i think that might be what some of that uh those those layer bulges might be it handled that uh, that overhang pretty well and uh, there is a couple spots here in the back um but you know just because there's a lack of support there in the model and my uh, my idea maker slicer uh profile that i printed right after did the same thing so look, overall, I mean, you know, look, anyone, like I said before, anyone, even anyone giving us uh, the time and, and money involved in producing some free tools is great. And I think it, it does have surprisingly uh, a lot of options there to sort of tweak and tune uh, the profile a bit more, which I think I'll be playing with here. The um, so if you're, you know, if you're sort of a beginner intermediate and um, the, the, you know, the super advanced options of like Cura and Idea Maker and S3D are sort of uh, freaking you out, then I think the self CAD stuff is, um, is a good, is a good start for you. And, and I think with some, some user tuning, I think you can probably uh, get it tweaked in and, and producing some pretty good prints like uh, you know like I said this is this is what you do this is the process right you print something you you see what's wrong with it you try and troubleshoot and and dial it in and and these little lines that are bulging out here indicate flow rate and speed issues to me so I would probably tweak down the flow rate to something more like a 98 percent and probably slow it down to like 55 50 55 millimeters per second uh, and, and on these outside walls probably something slower like a 40. Um, and so, you know, like I said, overall pretty good, um, as a comparison, and I know it's not a real fair one because, you know, I've spent lots of time, you know, tweaking and tuning my idea maker profile, but this is, this is, this is my idea maker one. So I'll pull him away for just a half a second here. Um, but you know, so this is, this is what I'd be looking for, um, uh, to get to with self cat. And it'll be interesting to see if I can do that. I think I'm going to. I think I'm gonna play and just see, but you can see the Z seam running up the back there. That same sort of um, you know droopiness right there, which is uh, expected because that's just part of the model. Um, I think under the chin, it probably handled things a little bit better. So overall, you know, my DMaker profile, as expected, would be a bit smoother just because I've played with it a ton. So um, so yeah, there's the the self CAD, um, and I, I you know I I think it's a keeper. I like it. Uh, I. I wouldn't have any issue using it again. Uh, I'll definitely use it for its design stuff um, just to try it out. Sometimes Fusion can be a little bit finicky and kind of slow on the machine that I'm running. So I'd be interested to see how the design aspects work. So there you go. I hope this helps and, and um, gives you a little bit of inspiration to try some new slicers out there and see if there's something that, that works better for you. So uh, thanks a lot. Like and subscribe and we'll do some more videos soon. Thanks.